Um, the countries that try to do that are seeing backlash. And so right. it really is not a model that works. And so I think by legalizing, then we're telling these young girls, you are not victims. Girls that are still being forced to be on the street, that they are now choosing this as a profession. Right. We're taking away that victim title from them. And I feel like that in itself, we're, we're missing out on an opportunity to help girls that really need that help. Mm -hmm. um, do you think there's a connection at all to, to porn and, and the sex trafficking industry? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, I honestly personally believe there's a strong tie um, between the adult entertainment industry and the sex trafficking industry. And there really um, is almost like a blurred line because it all starts with how we are portraying women in our media and what we're saying their value is, how we're teaching our young people, boys and girls, to value women's bodies and to value them as individuals. And as we start to objectify them in media, we're saying they're not as valuable. Their worth is less than another man. And so as that becomes a part of normal thinking, then it's much easier for us to then turn a blind eye when we see someone on the street. And it's hard for us to really see that we kind of, we created that path for that individual because we said, that was sexy. That is something you should aspire to. And so less is more. And we're now creating this, you know, lust and desire for men to go out and seek. And mm. what we're seeing is that men who are involved in pornography, the longer length of time that they're involved, the more um, violent they're becoming when it comes to seeking out um, sex from women who are on the streets. Really? And so um, it's just, it's this insatiable desire. And it's one of those things that becomes so numb. And they then start to see these girls as objects. Um, and instead of as women who potentially could be at risk or in danger mm -hmm. every time. And how do these guys, um, I guess, be, where do they find pimps like where do these mm -hmm. things happen and go down i mean is it online is it if it's not online where is it combination so mm -hmm. um we'll see girls on the streets there are several prominent boulevards in los angeles that are known for hotbeds for girls that are being trafficked on oh, and really? Then you'll find them online. So recently we saw that Craigslist, you know, or Backpage, I'm sorry, was shut down because they had ads selling underage girls. And so we're seeing just another arise in the internet as well as far as girls being sold because it's something that is hard to control. And, you know, a girl can say she's a certain age when she really mm -hmm. is not. That age is much younger. And... You know, it's hard for, for people to actually catch and see. So it's it's a combination. It could be in brothels. It can be online. It can be um, in homes in different communities where these girls are held and sold. And then it could be on the streets where, you know, what we assume as the, the regular prostitution mm -hmm. type of behavior. Um, a lot of these girls are not there by choice. I've heard that, that um, some big you know, huge national events are, are kind of hotbeds for these. Like I've heard the Super Bowl is a really bad one. Is that, that could be, maybe that's not true, but. Yes, I, I feel like it's any kind of um, event that brings a lot of people together where, first of all, there are buyers. So there are people who are looking for some kind of additional entertainment and also um, events that are so incredibly busy that it's easy to get lost in the shuffle, mm -hmm. right? So um, it's hard to really point someone out when there's a crowd of people engaging in some kind of, they're watching a sport or any type of entertainment. And so it, it's not necessarily just, you know, the Super Bowl. It's any event that creates that type of, you know, busy environment. 
What do you think people could do, like say in that instance where it is an in-person event or it's something mm -hmm. ha like happening before our eyes, what can either the event, um, you know, w workers or even us as spectators like kind of keep our eye out for or? Yeah. It's typically you're, you know, what you're going to be looking for is someone who looks either scared or looks like they just don't want to be there. Obviously, um, they're going to be wearing a lot less clothing than you as well. And so, oh, so you think they're actually like trying to, to promote mm -hmm. at these events too? Yeah, right? you'll yeah, see girls throughout. And it's, you know, if you look at a NASCAR event, <laughs> probably a little more difficult to kind of figure out. <laughs> Who's there? <laughs> but um, I feel like it's a little bit more recognizable mm -hmm. because there is going to be someone there, unfortunately, that is, in a sense, making sure that she doesn't run away. Like she handler, doesn't escape, like in a sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so, you know, it's not safe for anyone to feel like they're going to be the rescuer and they're going to go help this girl and, you know, you know, bring her to the authorities or to what that, whatever they think that in the moment that could look like. Um, the safest thing is to always call the hotline. There is a national hotline that receives phone calls and they receive calls from those that are being trafficked and from those that think that they're experiencing um, a trafficking situation in their presence. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching the episode. If you're interested in contributing to the conversation and supporting the show, there's two easy things you can do. One, click subscribe. And two, visit our Patreon page where you get exclusive access to the Exploring Minds community.